And now I would like to introduce Emily Tarrett, the Postal Inspector with the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. I would like to thank the BBB for holding this important consumer protection event and for inviting the Postal Inspection Service to attend. Each year, postal inspectors respond to thousands of consumer fraud complaints. Fraud is as old as time, and our agency has been on the forefront of protecting consumers since the mail fraud statute was enacted in 1872. We have a saying, security, it comes with a stamp. The United States Postal Inspection Service is the security you purchase every time you conduct business with the Postal Service. When consumers use the U.S. mail, they should know their communications will be protected by the Postal Inspection Service. This year, our agency will focus on two scams impacting our older Americans, the grandparent scam and obituary fraud. It starts with a phone call from someone claiming to be your grandchild or a friend or relative of the family who mysteriously received information about your grandchild. The caller is in distress and asks you to send money immediately to get them home from the hospital, another country, or even pay their bail when they have been falsely accused, falsely accused, whatever the case. This is the start of an elaborate scam to con you out of your money while breaking your heart in the process. You might be wondering how these scammers choose you to contact. Well, sometimes it is as random, other times you name your name may be on a marketing list, social website, or mentioned in the obituary of a loved one. We often hear consumers say it is impossible to scam me because one, they don't know the names of my family members or friends, and two, you are too savvy to fall for this sort of scam. Well, think again. It can start with a high grandma or grandpa baiting you to ask David or Cindy, is it you? Once you reply, then you have that once you reply, they have you on the line hook and sinker, and they will reel you in playing on your heartstrings until you agree to send money. These calls also tend to come in the middle of the night or early in the morning when you may not be as alert and thinking about the voice on the other end. Or if you question why they don't really sound like a grandchild, they may explain it away. Oh, I have a cold or, or I'm not feeling well. It's a simple scam, not much to it. But think, if the scammer gets $1,000 to $2,000 a week for, with just a phone call and a trip to pick up the funds, that's a lot of money for minimal effort. Postal inspectors advise anyone who receives a call from this, of this nature to always call your relative to see exactly where your grandchild is. More often than not, your grandchild is sitting at home, at school, or elsewhere, but certainly not in any danger. These callers use these tactics to gather information of a personal nature. Giving the scammer a window into your world could lead, to, lead you being repeatedly victimized, which leads me to the next discussion on obituary fraud. The obituaries are a place to tell the story of your loved one and just how wonderful and meaningful their life was. Unfortunately, unscrupulous characters take this as an opportunity to scour the obituaries to gather information about the deceased such as the birth date, address, and even employment history. Once this information is obtained, the scammer calls the spouse and poses as a representative from a credit card company. Usually, female spouses are targeted because in their day, the husband usually handled the finances. So the unsuspecting spouse might give out information not knowing how this will have an impact on their finances. The conversation goes something like this. The relative is called and the person indicates they are from a credit card service. The scammer may give their condolences for your loss and then ask the spouse what they want to do with the deceased's credit cards. If they want to keep them, they would need to verify some information and get additional information from them. They would mention the name of the credit card and indicate it begins with a particular number. This would lead the spouse to believe the caller is actually from a credit card company, not knowing that credit cards from Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover all start with the same number. For example, Visa begins with four and MasterCard with the number five. This would entice the spouse to give the rest of the credit card number. Once the card number is obtained, the scammer and the co-conspirators would use the cards to purchase items that would then be sold for cash. We mention this repeatedly because consumers must be aware that any small bit of information can be used to develop a scheme to defraud. While postal inspectors are extremely successful in investigating fraud, Consumers are the first line of defense. Remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. 
Consumers must always verify any unsolicited call or offer. Never give out any personal information on the phone to someone you do not know. And most important, at any time you have a question regarding your, your loved one, pick up the phone and call the company you are doing business with. This will save you additional heartache. For more information on this topic or to report a crime, contact the U.S. Postal Inspection Service at 1-800-1-877-876-2455 and your local police department to file a complaint. Thank you. Thank you, Inspector Tarrets. So as you can see, um, consumers have a lot of power uh, to protect their personal information, ask a lot of questions, do their homework.